everybody. Welcome to More Than Sunday with The Gathering Place, where we equip you to live out your faith more than Sunday. Today, Pastor Julia is going to continue sharing about your boundaries, laying hold of your land, knowing what you're responsible for and what you're not. But before we get there, I just want to encourage you with a couple of things here today. Uh, God is doing something significant at the gathering place. We just began to meet or gather together on Sunday mornings again uh, just a couple weeks ago. And as we've come together, uh, we are very intentional to make sure that this is not a show. It's not a production. It is really about a people coming together in a certain place to experience the presence of God. And so we're taking time to share our hearts as pastors with the congregation, but to connect with one another, to care, to minister, to love one another. We're meeting together to hear the word of God. And in these gatherings, we're also worshiping the Lord. Let me tell you something. The presence of the Lord has been sweet and it's been powerful. I wanna encourage you, if you are able, if you are willing to come out to the gathering place on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Uh, we are doing everything we can to maintain health, both physically by distancing, washing our hands, wearing masks, but also emotionally and spiritually. We've gotta be about it, spirit, soul, and body. And that's what we're going after. We are in a new day for church. Church as usual, uh, those days are past. I believe this is an opportunity from God for us to really reevaluate who we are, what we're doing, and to begin to lay out the groundwork or the foundation to become a place where God gets to do what He wants to do. I want you to uh, sit back and receive this word from Pastor Julia, and then I'll be right here back with us again at the end. Hello again. Well, I just wanted to share a little bit of my journal reading with you, um, my journaling process with you when I was walking through what belongs to me and what doesn't belong to me. This is a part of my personal story, personal journey, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to take some time to read kind of what I walked with, walked out with the Lord, and maybe it will help you with your own life. That scripture that I had shared in um, session one and two in Proverbs chapter 24, you heard me say multiple times that the you will wage your own war has really ministered to me over the years. And uh, I wanted to share with you beyond just drawing the line down the middle of my page and, and beginning to list what belongs to me and what belongs to my husband. Um, I had an experience that just really got highlighted to me some of the years of waste that I had spent trying to wage other people's war. So I'm gonna to read to you what I wrote in my journal. Um, as I read through my lists, I realized the years I had spent trying to wage wars that didn't belong to me. I had a problem. My life had consisted of countless hours of worry, frustration, anger, in my head conversations, trying to get other people to do the right thing. At the same time, the war at my door and in my house was being unattended to. What drove me to this idiocy? Why was I so consumed with my spouse's and my children's outcomes? That was the question I began to lead with. And this is where the involvement of the Holy Spirit in my life has been so critical over the years. One of the culprits was years of painting the wrong mental picture of what Christian success looked like. Christian culture inadvertently became my standard to which I drove myself and those closest to me. Assuming the picture I had painted was God's best for me, I took it as a military assignment and marched the troops towards the finish line. One conversation with a close friend and I had an aha moment where the Holy Spirit showed me the picture I had painted of Christian success had not been updated since I was about nine years old. <laughs> The Holy Spirit then handed me an eraser and said, it's time to update the picture. It felt as if the weight of the world had fallen off my shoulders. Over the course of the following year, I had two more marking events that drew out a few more culprits that had had me waging wars that did not belong to me. The first was a Christmas time. The kids had all come home from college and where they were at, and we had two weeks of a beautiful time together. 
one thing led to another and I, I used a dish towel to snap at one of my kids accidental, accidentally hitting them harder than I expected to. Instead of at, apologizing, I reprimanded them for their overreaction. They subsequently stormed out the door and didn't stay for dinner. The dinner that I have been preparing and expecting everyone to stay for. Distraught, I finished doing dinner with the rest of the family. Through tears, I dismissed myself for the evening. The weeping didn't stop until the sun rose up the next morning. Through the night, my soul cried out to God, where did the tension in our house come from? Why couldn't I have just apologized? What causes the culture of overreactions? I was desperate for answers. The word control kept coming to me as I prayed, so I asked. Father, show me how control has affected my family. For the next few hours, it was like watching a movie. The veil dropped. I saw the evil spirit of control and its effects on me, my spouse, and my kids. I repented. I grieved. And I mourned. You see, the towel swipe was my passive-aggressive attempt to control my daughter's insensitive attitude instead of a direct comment. Her reaction was resisting my passive-aggressive control. The other members then suffered indirectly by having to deal with an evening of tension and chaos. My commitment to controlling my daughter was so deep that it was costing our relationship because you cannot trust someone who seeks to control you. Her reactions were warning signs that control was not working. She desperately needed and wanted a genuine relationship that respected her individuality and choices and allowed her to pay her own consequences. As we battled it out, my husband was pulled in as a mediator and interpreter. My second daughter got lost in the chaos of our battles. My second son's soul shut down and my youngest son was left confused and upset. This was not one event. This was years of turmoil in our house. This breakthrough that happened that night was a marker for me. I, I had to change. It was on me, no one else. It was my responsibility to turn this dynamic around. The culprit was control. The second event happened when we took on a new assignment. Within a two week span, I had three different conversations with people closest to me. My husband, a family member, and the husband of a good friend. Each consecutive conversation informed me I was too much. I sat with God with the shades drawn in my room. What was it that he was trying to expose to me that was in me, that was creating environments where all three of these people reacted strongly to me? And why was I so very unaware of my behavior? Irritated, I huffed and puffed my way into a silent stare. Within seconds after my silence, the Holy Spirit showed me a pattern using several consecutive examples over the last 12 years of ministry. I often found myself trying to drive in other people's lanes, over-connecting, over-networking people together so that no one or no one or the other would suffer, striving hard to fill all the gaps of the ministry next to Daniel, and on and on it went. As I saw the pattern, I wondered why. Why did I overextend myself, drive in others' lanes, concern myself with affairs that were not under my authority or concern? and or give advice in areas I was not asked. Why did I do that? Here's where the root came. I was afraid others would be neglected and not heard because it was my personal and deepest wound. My aggressive playing habits came from a place of personal pain. It drove me into others' lanes and gave me a sense of over-responsibility to things, people, and structures that did not belong to me. These things were not mine. I drew a deep breath. I repented and I asked for healing. Over responsibility stemming from a wound of being, feeling emotionally neglected and not heard was another culprit. Redraw, redrawing lines of what war was mine took me addressing the spirit of control, the unhealthy striving and driving, and letting go of the sense of over responsibility. Rooted in pain, all three had woven a web that created a limiting factor in my life. 
Without these three, I am now able to see clearly enough to pick up the pen and begin to draw the picture God has for me all along. I want to encourage you today. If any of that resonated with you, spend some time with your Father God and let Him speak to you. Let Him heal the wounds. Let Him uncover the lies and let Him speak truth to your heart that you can build your life on. Truth is where we build from. And so if you've built on things that aren't truth, you'll see them begin to disintegrate. And that's what I experienced. So I had to go back and say, Lord, where's the lies? Where's the habits, the patterns, the perceptions that aren't from you? And that's where being in the word of God is so paramount because it shines a light into my own heart and it begins to show me the things that he wants to take away and the things he wants to give me. So I hope that encouraged you as part of my personal testimony and story. And uh, be encouraged, know that you're loved and that you have a good, good father who has a good, good plan for you. We'll see you next time. Hey, welcome back. And uh, I hope that you were encouraged by that word today. Uh, if you were, would you subscribe? Would you like it? Would you share it? And uh, here's something I want to ask of you as well. I want to hear from you. I want to hear about what God is doing in your life. I want to know also how can we as a church partner together with you? What are the ways that you have received the most or grown the most? Or you think, man, I could really use somebody to partner with me in this area or in this way. I want to know, can you send me an email? Info at tgpchurch.com. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, plus, if there's any way that we could pray for you, just simply write it down there as well. Well, that's all we have for you this week. I hope to see you in person on campus or online next week. We love you. God bless you and live out your faith more than Sunday.